We're now going to talk about the passage in Matthew 24 that speaks about Jesus coming in the clouds. Did he come in the clouds? We've been showing that the coming of Jesus in Matthew 24 did happen in AD 70. And it wasn't the coming that you read about in 1 Corinthians 15, where it speaks about the resurrection, which is in our future. Please make sure you get that point. The resurrection is coming. The church is going to be resurrected. I don't like using the term rapture because rapture is a teaching that has stemmed from the use of that word when the word itself, there's nothing wrong with the word itself. It just means being caught away, caught up. In fact, the Latin version of the Bible does, uses the word raptura. And when people say the word rapture is not in the Bible, it is if you read it in Latin. But I don't like the doctrine associated with it because they say that the rapture is going to be secret, taken away, uh, church taken away, and then people left behind for a great tribulation. So I don't believe that. I believe that when Jesus comes, resurrects the church, there is no people can be left behind. Everyone's either going to uh, hell or heaven. Everyone is going to go up in the uh, white throne judgment to be judged for their works. We'll get into that later as well. But in Matthew chapter 24, let's read it. If Matthew 24 is a coming in the first century, then immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Now notice how I read that. The sign of the Son of Man in heaven. We've talked about this briefly before, but the sign is not the Son of Man himself in heaven. It's a sign that he's in heaven. And Daniel chapter 7 shows him going to the throne where the Ancient of Days sat and the Son of Man is actually going in clouds. You'll see that too. But it says, And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So people say, well, how, how can that be in the first century? And I had to get the answer for that myself. I had to check these things out and get the correct interpretation. And lots of people always say this when they're confronted with this understanding, usually for the first time. Surely that didn't happen in AD 70. Nobody saw Jesus coming in the clouds. But when you look at the rest of the Bible and see how the Bible uses that phrase, coming in the clouds, then you realize he certainly did. Now, let me go right now to Matthew 26 and 63, where Jesus is talking to Caiaphas, the high priest. Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said to him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. And then Jesus makes this profound statement which shocks him and the people that he's talking to, and they all begin crying blasphemy. Thou hast said, in other words, you said it, Nevertheless, here, nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. He said, you are going to see this. You're going to see the Son of Man on the throne coming in clouds of heaven. Now, some people think that's our future when everybody's going to see him and sinners as well as everybody else on the earth. But that makes no sense because if this man is in hell, after his death, because he absolutely was a rejecter of Jesus Christ, how is he going to see the Son of Man coming to earth in the clouds? And even the people standing around him. Somebody pointed out to me, well, the word you is plural, so it's not just him. Well, yeah, it's not just him. It's those that are standing around also in the same room, and the same thing applies. They were all alive at that time, and Jesus said they would see him on the throne coming in the clouds of power. Now, heaven is where his throne is. That's the only place you're going to find his throne. And so why is he saying, you're going to see me on the throne if they're in hell? You know, it's not speaking about judgment day when everybody stands before him. It's not speaking about those that are judged after they die because 
He said the same thing to the disciples and indicated they would not be dead and neither in heaven nor hell when they would see this event. And that's at the end of Matthew chapter 16, verses 27 to 28. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So these men would not taste death before this event would occur. In other words, they would still be alive. And it can't be referring to a spiritual life in spiritual bodies that they'll receive in the resurrection because the resurrection of the body is yet future. That did not happen in their lifetime. And these men did taste death way back in their lifetime, of course, in the first century. But Jesus was referring to his coming of judgment that happened from 68 or 66 to 70 AD. So how can he be said to have come in clouds in that time? Many times God used throughout the Bible the thought of coming in clouds when he indicated that he was coming in judgment against the people. Uh, it's not a mystical interpretation and it's not Gnosticism. If you look elsewhere in the Bible, you see that over and over again. David called out to God in 2 Samuel chapter 22 when he was in a time of trouble. And David describes God's response in the same manner. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, and he did hear me, hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured and coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. Now notice this, darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly and was seen upon the wings of the wind. Now let me just pause there for a moment and bring this out. When God came to David in rescue, it's saying he was seen. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. He rode upon a cherub. Now, nobody distinctly or physically saw God coming on a cherub, physically seen in the sky. You can't see God at any time, and no man ever has seen God. So, this is another point I want to bring out. But anyway, it says, And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the sky also. Thick clouds of the skies. Now, here he's coming in judgment against David's enemies when David cries out to him. And, and there's darkness under God and there's thick clouds and skies or pavilions and tabernacles around him. And he rode upon a cherub. And uh, did he physically see those things? Did David see that and, and witness it? Of course not. But he was inspired of God to write about God's judgment in this manner when God would take his persecutors and deal with them. And it was a well-known picture to the Jews. They all knew the Old Testament. They were very familiar with it. So when they heard Jesus talk about coming in the clouds, they didn't think like 21st century Christians who don't know these passages of the Bible. They, they understood it as a judgment. And the high priest, he wasn't shocked and said, this guy's a nutcase, get rid of him. He's saying he's going to come in clouds. No, he knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. So he cried blasphemy. He was shocked to his core to hear that. Because it was talking about Jesus being divinity. Only God comes in clouds like that. Only God sits on the throne of heaven. And these were very familiar references to the high priest when Jesus said the son is on the throne and he's coming in clouds and you're going to see it. In other words, he knew that he was being told by Jesus he's going to be judged in a wrath of God just like David's enemies in 2 Samuel chapter 22. He didn't use speech that the priest was unfamiliar with. And he didn't talk about 2,000 years after that point in time when the church would be resurrected. Jesus was actually letting the high priest know, I am the God of the Old Testament. I have come in judgment and I'm going to come in judgment again. And Jerusalem this time is going to be judged just like she was judged in the Old Testament times using heathen armies. And the Bible says God's presence in clouds implies righteousness and judgment. Go to Psalm 97 and the second verse. 
Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. It's telling you right out. It represents judgment. In Jeremiah 4, verses 13 to 14, Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariot shall be as a whirlwind. His horses swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Over and over again, you're reading this same point. Look in Nahum. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Again and again, Zephaniah chapter 1. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. We need to educate ourselves with these verses. Look at it, it's everywhere, this kind of speech. Speaking of judgment, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Again and again, this is all repeated. And everybody who heard Jesus' words in that day would have plainly understood what he was saying. God is coming in judgment and the high priest knew exactly that's what Jesus referred to. So the priest cried blasphemy. He didn't scratch his head wondering what on earth is Jesus talking about? Coming in clouds in the sky. You're going to look up and you're going to see clouds all around a man coming and everybody's going to understand this. Uh, it would have been the case if he, if he was referring to a resurrection of the church 2,000 years later when the priest wouldn't even be around to see it. So it doesn't make sense either way. Now, did anyone physically see Jesus coming in clouds in AD 70? No, they did not. But the destruction in Jerusalem that lasted from 66 to 70 AD, they did. And it's that that's what Jesus meant by people seeing him in the clouds. They saw the destruction. And so don't confuse the coming of Jesus and the resurrection in our future with the coming noted in Matthew 24. He came in clouds. He came in judgment. That's what it means. God bless you as we continue to chat and discuss these issues of Bible prophecy made simple.